Hello, it's a joy to be with you again today for Vespers, a time of uh, devotion, scripture, song, and reflection. I'm Pastor Greg Williams at Grace Lutheran Church in Hendersonville, North Carolina. This is my wonderful wife, Brenda, with us to, uh, to sing a, a song as she always does. Let's begin with the word of prayer. Gracious and loving God, we gather in your presence with a candle or lamp lit to remind us that you are indeed the light of the world and darkness can never overcome your light, your presence. Be with us now, still our hearts and our minds that we might hear what you have to teach us, to say to us in word and song and meditation this day. Amen. Like I mentioned in the prayer, uh, if you've got a candle or a lamp, go ahead and light it uh, to prepare your sacred space for this. Um, this is uh, pre being prepared for Thursday just before uh, Reformation Sunday, a day where Lutherans and indeed all Protestants uh, should, uh, I say that as a Lutheran, but uh, with humility, of course, I uh, should be marking the, the Re Protestant Re Reformation that Martin Luther initiated way back in 1517 when he uh, posted his 95 theses, uh, 95 points of debate for the academics and the scholars uh, for the church. And from that, those got pr taken down, printed, distributed, and, and Luther became the, the person out front calling for change in the church, calling for the church to return to what he had rediscovered in scripture about law and gospel and especially God's grace. So as we look forward to that celebration at uh, Grace Lutheran Church, other Lutheran churches, and probably other Protestant churches, I want to read for us tonight our the appointed reading from Romans, the third chapter uh, that's appointed for Sunday on Reformation. Uh, Romans 3, verses 19 through 28. Paul writes, Now we know that whatever the law says, it speaks to those who are under the law, so that every mouth may be silenced, and the whole world may be held accountable to God. For no human being will be justified in his sight, by deeds prescribed by the law, for through the law comes the knowledge of sin. But now, apart from the law, the righteousness of God has been disclosed and is attested by the law and the prophets, the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. For there is no distinction, since all have sinned and all fall short of the glory of God, they are now justified by His grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God put forward as a sacrifice of atonement by His blood, effective through faith. He did this to show His righteousness, because in His divine forbearance He had passed over the sins previously committed. It was to prove at the present time that He Himself is righteous that he justifies the one who has faith in Jesus. Then what becomes of boasting? It is excluded. By what law? By that of works? No, but by the law of faith. For we hold that a person is justified by faith apart from the works prescribed by the law. Word of God, word of life. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. In this passage, we hear some good uh, familiar terms, law and justice, justification, righteousness, and freedom. Luther, in the, in the book of Concord, it talks about three purposes of the law. Uh, to restrain our sinfulness, to tell us what not to do. To identify our sin, to tell us when we've done wrong so we know what to confess. And then the third purpose is to see that we can't keep the law, so it drives us to the only place we can find forgiveness, justification, righteousness, and salvation. It drives us to Jesus Christ. 
drives us to the freedom from sin and his punishment that Jesus alone offers. Think about, remember in uh, Gospels where Jesus told his disciples and the people gathered around, he said, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you can't get into heaven. And all the disciples and the crowd just stood there flabbergasted because the Pharisees existed to keep the law perfectly. And if they couldn't do it good enough to get into heaven, what hope did anybody else have? The law drives us to the one place, the one way to get into heaven, the one place for forgiveness and salvation. Jesus Christ and the grace of God revealed in Jesus. On the doors in entry into the narthex at grace, we've got a, a few words from Ephesians chapter 2. Uh, you can look it up later, Ephesians 2 verses 4 through 9. And in verse 8, Paul says there that we are saved by grace through faith. And it's a gift so that nobody can boast. It's a free gift of God's grace. We're saved by God's grace, set free from the penalty to sin that we deserve. We can get rid of that guilt. We can get rid of that sinfulness and burden. So our hands are freed. Free, Paul calls slavery, calls bondage to sin slavery. So we're free from that slavery, from that forced labor to sin. But what are we freed for? We're freed to do the good works that we see in Jesus the good works of the gospel, to love our neighbor, to feed the hungry, to clothe the naked, to help care for the poor, the widow, the orphan, those on the fringes of society. And that is needed during this COVID time as much or more than any time ever in our lifetime, perhaps. And so we celebrate that we don't have to try to keep the law that's far more than we can do. It helps keep us in line, gives us constraints, but we find forgiveness, hope, and freedom to do good by God's grace in Jesus Christ. So, since we are marking our freedom from the crushing burden and penalty of the law, freedom from sin, freedom from the penalty of the law, freedom in God's grace, Brenda's found a marvelous song from the, written at a Lutheran seminary in Tanzania. It's called Set Free, Set Free. So uh, thanks for picking out another <laughs> wonderful song, Brenda. Oh, you're welcome. Set free, set free by God's grace. Unbound, unbound, my heart sings. With joy, with joy that Christ brings. Love that shines from God's face. Yes, Jesus, Jesus, greet me with love when fear and doubt had seized me. Yes, Jesus, Jesus, greet me with love when fear and doubt had seized me. As rain has made the world green, so grace has brought to new birth, new hearts, new
<clears throat> Thank you. The highest wall that sin builds can't bank the tide of love's flood, nor stop the grace that God wills that flows from Christ with Christ's blood. No wall can stop it. No chains of sin can hold us when we turn to Christ and receive that grace in faith that frees us, that makes us right with God and sends us out to do those good things. So think about um, maybe on a piece of paper, write down the sins that you recognize that you want to be freed from. And then ask God to take them away, wad them up, throw them away, and realize that just as you throw that paper away and it's gone, so God removes your sin by God's grace we see in Christ. Now, make another list. What are some good things that the gospel's compelling you to do, sending you out to do? Call a neighbor, send a card to a friend, pick up food for the, the Living Waters Food Drive, or I am, make an extra gift to a charity that's caring for neighbors. What good thing can you do now that you don't have the burden of sin anymore? And then, Ask God to help you not to pick those sins up again, not to put the shackles back on your hands. Let's pray. Almighty and loving God, we rejoice that in your love for us, you sent your only son, Jesus, to show us your way, to teach us about grace and call us into faith. We rejoice that you've given us the Holy Spirit so that we can have faith to believe the unbelievable that in spite of our sinfulness, you love us and that you will always love us and forgive us so that we can be free, so that we can bring your love to life for those around us. Forgive us, free us, and Empower us by the presence of your Spirit to be your people, to be the church in the world here and now. We love you, Lord. Thanks so much for loving us. Amen. We join in praying the Lord's Prayer together. So we pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And then, as we usually do, let's conclude with Luther's evening prayer, praying that together. Let's pray. We, we give, give thanks, thanks to you, you Heavenly, Heavenly Father, Father, through Jesus Christ, Christ your dear Son, Son that you have graciously protected us today. We ask you to forgive us all our sins, where we have done wrong, and graciously to protect us tonight. Into your hands we commend ourselves, our bodies, our souls, and all that is ours. Let your holy angels be with us, so that the wicked foe may have no power over us. Amen. Thanks again for being with us this week. Uh, we look forward to uh, being with you through worship on Sunday. And uh, Reformation Sunday is a special day. We'll be marking uh, affirmation of baptism for four youth who have been growing in their faith and will affirm the commitments their parents made in baptism. Uh, we'll do that in our live stream at 9 o'clock. We'll also be uh, consecrating the sacrament of Holy Communion during the live stream. And then the distribution will be uh, drive-up communion between 10.30 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. on Sunday the 25th. So, um, Join us for live stream and then drive on over to receive the sacrament of God, Christ's body and blood. And it is Reformation, so remember, 
Wear something red that day when you drive over. We'll be wearing red. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. God be with you. Thanks for being with us today.